Check this out. For some reason, Dell bought at least 65 Magewell 11100 Pro Capture cards and decided, nah. We're doing something else, and that's rather expensive considering these go for $900 a pop. They eventually found their way to the Sprice or Seabay store for $389. I couldn't pass that up, and here we are. Inside this goth bag of edginess resides the Magewell 11100 Pro Capture Quad HDMI, and this is all you get for $899. A box, some pink foam, and the aforementioned bubble bag. But you also get a card capable of capturing four HDMI channels at up to 2048 by 2160 at 60 and 1920 by 1080 at up to 80 frames per second and up to 144 at lower resolutions. But I hear you asking, what about the Blackmagic HDMI quad? It's half the price. This is true. But it's also a haunted piece of hardware, and every bad thing you've ever read about it online is 100% true. It overheats, likes to disappear after firmware updates, doesn't work with AMD's Threadripper platform, and good luck getting it to detect your DSLR. Now I have the Intensity Pro 4K, the Original Intensity Pro, and the Decklink Mini Recorder 4K, and outside of the occasional hiccup, they all work flawlessly. This Decklink quad, it sits in a box until Blackmagic manages to unfuck it. The Major Will, on the other hand, it just works. You plug something in, done. It's also rated for 24-7 operation. Little things like that separate professional gear from hobbyist slash YouTuber Tinker Toys. And Magewell kind of knows this, and they've priced it accordingly. All right, let's get it installed and see if it knows how to Linux. Installation is straightforward. Drop it in any PCIe by 4 slot that you can't see in the shot. I know, save me the comments. Then we cut things on and wait for the fans to cycle. Keep waiting. Almost. There we go. That's what it sounds like when the other fans have calmed down. Yeah. No. Do not do anything you are about to see. It will void your warranty like 11 times over and this segment of the video will be used as Exhibit A. During the court case, this shouty little boy is connected with a 2-pin JST 1.25 connector. We're going to need an itsy bitsy extension cable so we can adapt it to a standard motherboard fan connector. For this job, I'm going to be using solder seal wire connectors. No idea if they're any good, but hey, they were cheap, and you know what? I was curious. They work by inserting the leads until they meet in the middle, followed by several minutes of my dinky little heat gun wheezing on them. This is what you end up with. It worked, eventually, but you know what? I think I'm going to stick with solder and uh, heat shrink. Now time for the moment of truth. I have the voltage set on the motherboard to 1.8 volts and that's just enough to keep the fan cooling without being terribly shouty. Not bad at all. Let's get the drivers installed. This is relatively straightforward. There'll be a link in the description. There's also options on this page for firmware documentation and all that. I suggest you read it, but I'm just going to drop everything into my downloads folder. And we're going to need to get that extracted. Simple enough. Can you tell I come from an age where I do not trust drag and drop? True story. Once we have it extracted, we'll have the Pro Capture for Linux underscore whatever the current version of the driver will be when you're watching this video. We have install sh and rtfm. This is going to tell us some basic things. Not everything we need to know, but it tells you how to control, how to get your info, and hey, we need to run install.sh. But before we do that, let's get a build a kernel module. So if you don't have a build environment set up running install sh, it's not going to get much done. On Debian systems, you know, like Debian or Ubuntu, stuff like that, you need to install your build essentials package and your Linux headers package. This should automatically grab everything for you. I have everything installed, but we're just kind of going through the motions. After that's installed, we're going to run sudo install sh. What that's going to do is go in and it's going to build the kernel module and insert it. As you can see, 
if you have um, drivers currently installed, it'll uninstall them, reinstall them and say, hey, you need to give your box a reboot. And that's what we're going to do. We're back from the reboot and we can find out whether or not our MageWell Pro is up and running with MWCAP info. And there it is, um, device not through three. Firmware 131, you can see this is hardware revision A, which is why the fan's so loud and it tells you your driver version and all that. Now I'm going to head over to Pulse Audio just to show you that um, audio wise, you are going to have four new Pro Capture endpoints and you'll have the option for your standard stereo input and multi channel input. I'll let you know that it's working. Moving on to the OBS installation, this, this is relatively straightforward. You're going to set this up the same way that you would a webcam or, you know, like a USB 3 capture dongle or anything like that by using uh, V4L2. And check it out. You have device not through three. It's easy enough, you know, and that's going to go left to right on the card. What we need to do is tell it a resolution, tell it a frame rate, and we're going to be using a partial 709 color space. And there we go. I picked it right up. Don't want to use buffering. We're going to click OK. Let's get that minimized and we will open up another video feed. I have uh, two of the boxes in the studio currently connected for the purpose of this demonstration. Once again, we'll set that to 1920 by 1080, 60, no buffering, partial, and we fought. There it is. Hey, there it is. That's the right one. Now we have both of the streams connected. I can minimize this window and yeah, it's running fine. And most importantly, you can do that two more times. No problem whatsoever. But you might, you might be wondering, where's the audio? Well, unlike a Blackmagic device, um, since this is working with V4L2, you're going to have to add the audio in separately. And we're going to do that by adding a Pulse Audio Input Capture. Again, we got to do a little RNG because it doesn't list them not through. Well, I guess it might, but I'm just kind of hunting and packing at this point until I get my audio feed. But you should get the idea because once you've done that, it's a good idea to take the video capture device and the audio input capture device and put them in a group so you never have to do that again. All right, time for the three-way comparison. We have NDI, Blackmagic, and Magewell stacked together. Starting off with NDI, this is the free option. I'm using the OBS NDI plugin. It works. It gets the job done. This is 1080p60 using the Talos principle because it's got what I like, you know, plenty of foliage and text. Blackmagic, Blackmagic Mini Recorder 4K. Looks the part. I don't think anyone's ever complained about Blackmagic image quality. Colors are accurate. And that little hiccup that you saw right there wasn't the fault of the Magewell, which we just switched to. It's doing the job. But let's stack the NDI, Blackmagic, and Magewell together and take a look at the text. That That's one of the downsides with NDI. You can see a lot of blocking in there. Not so with the Blackmagic or the Magewell. I'd say the mage won't look a little sharper, but um, I don't know. Share with me your thoughts on that. One thing I always like to take a look at is the box because reasons, man. Static, it's kind of hard to tell the difference, right? You know, NDI color is a little bit off, but that's nothing that you can fix. But you can, you, you can see the blocking in there. That happens. Again, not so with the black magic. And let's move over to the mage well. Yeah, I mean, you're really splitting the hairs on this one. But the major one does work, no issues. Now, I ran across something that made me scratch my head. I'm in DaVinci Resolve and said, I, don't, I have no hatred towards Black Magic. I buy a lot of their stuff. And I noticed this. The Majorwell and NDI sources were roughly matched together, being like two frames slower than the black magic capture card that's not right that's not how it's supposed to work and what i'm doing here is i'm just advancing one frame at a time i had to break out the pdf turns out there's a couple of transfer modes for um mage wall cards in general your normal mode your low latency mode is what we want and they have a yolo swag turbo dorito mode that 
basically requires it to be built into the application, which is most certainly not built into OBS. So we're not going to mess with it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Let's get low latency mode because, um, yeah, reasons. We're going to do that with MW Camp Control. This is real easy. Uh, once you've installed the drivers, that's already in your bin directory. You're good. We're going to be using video output low latency on and pick the video device that you want. You know, not through three. Not a big deal. If you need to cut it off. Oh, I should mention this is not persistent. So you'll have to set up some type of a script for launch to make sure it does it every single time. But let's go ahead and cut that back on and let's have another go and see if that fixed our issue. There we go. Now, there's your latency comparison between the Magewell um, 11100 Pro and a Blackmagic Deck Link Mini Recorder 4K. Same. You know, they're about two frames quicker than what you would experience with NDI. And, and I should point out that my NDI connection is 10 gig fiber box to box. Time for the works and nopes. Nopes. It is loud because revision A boards lack that fan control. Later revision boards, this is not a problem. However, if you're ordering one, it's RNG, whether or not that's going to affect anything. And even so, out of the box, you would have to update the firmware. Be prepared for that, or at least keep it in mind. Two, no way to update that firmware on Linux. That is bizarre. That is strange. Magewell, fix that. Three, these devices do require a kernel driver. So keep that in mind um, or you'll run into situations that should say currently at time of uh, recording this video, they've been updated to where they work with kernel 511 plus unlike black magic, which is still stuck at 510 and below. And finally, low latency mode is not default and it's also not persistent between reboots. I'd like an option like that. It's not a big deal. You can set a script like before you launch OBS and it'll take care of it. Well, preferably after you launch OBS, but you get the idea. Let's talk about what works. 1080p and 2K capture at 60 frames per second. Hey, does what it says on the tin. It's designed for 24 seven operation. You could throw one of these in an ingestion server and just leave it. Never worry about it. It is compatible with all of the things that is a huge selling point for this card. Good luck trying to find a source to plug into this and it not being able to pick it up. And finally, I just wanted to throw this in. Since it works with um, V4L2, you could use it as a webcam. You know, if you wanted to use it for Zoom or Jitsi or Skype, I guess. I don't know, but it is an option. Now, is it worth the price? Mm. If you need something that just works, yes, the Magewell HDMI quad does exactly what it says on the tin. It is wicked reliable and wicked compatible. That's what you're paying for. Image quality and latency are comparable to the Decklink 4K series, and that's a good thing. You know, I'd like to see how it stacks up against the AJA Kona HDMI or even the Magewell Pro Capture HDMI 4K Plus. Seriously, if anyone from Magewell or AJA happens to run across this video, get in touch. I hope this was helpful. And before I forget, there is a link to the eBay auction in the description. Also, we do have a Patreon page and those Linux loving miscreants get to watch this video a week early. Thank you all for the support. It's awesome. Hashtag LGC cares. As always, remember to subscribe the thumbs and like the some things I don't know exactly. The bells, yes. And when you're done with that, get out there and make something awesome.